A few months ago, I picked up this old Kenwood TS440S HF transceiver. I threw some wire in a tree in my backyard to use as an antenna, and I've had a blast talking with people all over the world using voice. I was curious to see if anybody used these old rigs for some of those fancy new digital modes I keep hearing about. The idea is to hook up your computer to a radio like this one to transmit information digitally over the airwaves. This here is a cat control cable I picked up for about $30, which allows my computer to tell the radio what frequency to go to. It also tells the radio when to enable the PTT transmit button, so all you need to do is just sit back and click. Although they make USB versions, I opted for the one that uses RS-232 with the old DB9 connector, so I could use a serial to USB adapter I had laying around. It's also cheaper to replace just an adapter in the event something ever broke on the serial to USB chipset. On the back of the radio is an impressive amount of I.O., including this ACC1 jack meant for select accessories. I'll be using this port for my cat control cable. Then on the other side are even more ports, in particular the AFSK in and out jacks, which we'll be using for this project to send audio from the computer to the radio and from the radio back to the computer. After some reading, I learned that the TS440S, despite having an accessory jack, does not support serial commands right out of the box. It needs a small microprocessor to understand the logic. So I ordered what's known as the IC10 chipset from the nice folks at PiXX.com for about $20. The manual for the Kenwood has detailed instructions for how to install these two chips. The job is fairly simple. An Elmer once told me to never be afraid to take apart your radio. It'll have to be done at some point in time, so let's get moving. Simply take out the chassis screws to remove the top and bottom covers. There's also some screws on both sides of the faceplate that will need to be removed as well. Lastly, there's a heat shield directly behind the faceplate with some small screws on the top and bottom that will also need to be removed. Just be careful with the little wiring harnesses behind the faceplate. And carefully tilt the faceplate forward to see the sockets where the new chips will go. Notice the notches in the new chips. If you're looking at them from this angle, the notches will be facing the left side of the socket. All right, we're looking good. Now let's talk about the audio side of things. Since I'm a music guy, I always have some kind of audio interfaces laying around. And most hams might be accustomed to the Signal Link USB devices, which are super cool and geared for amateurs, but they cost around 130 bucks. There are tons of cheaper audio solutions out there, like this Behringer Euphoria UM2. It runs about $45 and it works just fine. It also works great for other recording software if you're into that kind of thing. Having volume controls for input and output is also a huge plus. Let's go set everything up in the shack and get it all tested out. So here we are, and for my setup, I grabbed an old RCA cable and some Fano to quarter inch audio adapters. The red cable in the headphone output goes to the AFSK in jack on the back of the radio. Then the white cable in the interface's input goes to the AFSK out jack. She's all fired up and ready to go. I read about a few people having problems with serial to USB devices that use the prolific chipset. Fortunately, in my case, I didn't have any problems, but I was required to install the official Windows 10 driver from the Taiwanese website prolific.com.tw in order for the COM port to show up correctly and for my cat control cable to work. 
Once I identified which COM port it was on, I installed the program WSJTX and set up everything starting with the Radio Cat Control. Under the Radio tab, select your rig from the drop-down list. Then make sure you select the right COM port. Use Device Manager just to be sure. Then under the PTT Method section, select CAT. Lastly, under the Mode section, select USB, which is for Upper Sideband Operations. This will physically switch the radio to Upper Sideband mode, even on 40, 80, and 160 meters, as the digital modes that this program uses all operate on Upper Sideband. Click the Test CAT and Test PTT buttons to make sure your configurations work. You won't be able to save these radio settings without a successful test. Then under the Audio tab, you'll see that my USB audio interface input and output show up no problem. Go ahead and click OK to save. Now let's test out CAT control real quick to see what happens if we change the band in the program if it actually changes the frequency on the radio itself. I'm using the FT8 digital mode, and you can see that by setting this to 40 meters, the program automatically wants to use 7.074 megahertz, which is the FT8 calling frequency. Let's change it to the 20 meter band, which uses the 14.074 megahertz frequency to see if it actually changes it on the radio. Sweet, it worked. Now we can go ahead and make some contacts. As the program hears actual audio from the radio, it will decode that information on the screen and show you that a bunch of amateurs out there are trying to make contacts. And by calling CQ, you're sending out a bunch of digital noise from the computer to the AFSK input on the radio, which is then getting transmitted out to the world. All right, well, that's all for today, folks. I'm really looking forward to exploring more of the digital modes now that I have some of the basics working. I hope this has been informative for any owners of the Kenwood TS440S. Despite its age, it really is an awesome radio, and it's all ready to go for the modern day. This thing is solid. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Take care.